Hi and welcome to my math class. Today we're going to do a summary of factorizing. Now when we're doing factorizing there are five main groups. The first one is take out a common. When we look at the following sum and we want to do factorizing, the first thing we have to do is we have to see how many terms they are. Now a plus and minus breaks terms. So in this expression there are three terms. Now what is the same in each term? If we look at the 9, it's 3 times 3. Then we've got x squared. The second term, we've got 3xy. And in the last term, we've got 6, which is 3 times 2yq. The only thing that is the same in each term is the 3. So when we're taking out a common, we take out what is the same in each term. So we have three open brackets. In the bracket, we write down what is left if we had taken out the 3. So in the first one, we've got 3x squared. Now, if you had to multiply to check, 3 times 3 gives me 9x squared. Then in the second term, we take out the 3, so we are left with xy. Plus, in the last term, we take out the 3, so we are left with 2yq. That is the first rule of factorizing. The second rule of factorizing is trinomials. Trinomials usually means that there are three terms. Now, if you are looking at trinomials, you need to remember that the first step is always the last sign. This sign can go any way. It can go plus and plus, minus and minus, plus and minus, minus and plus. To determine your final answer, we look at the sign of the second term. In this example, we are doing x squared plus 5x plus 6. But remember in your final exams, you could get different signs like x squared minus 5x plus 6, x squared plus 5x minus 6 they can keep on changing these two signs. In order to be comfortable with that, you must know your multiplication rule of signs, but also your addition and subtraction rule of signs. So let's go through the steps. Number one, we're going to look at the sign of the third term. Right, in this case, it's plus. So when we multiply, a plus and plus will give me a plus, a minus and minus will also give me a plus. So there are two options. I can have two brackets, one with plus and plus, one with minus and minus. But now we look at the sign of the second term. The sign of the second term says it's plus. So we've got plus and plus would give me a plus and when I add a plus and plus I also get a plus so I know that my two brackets are plus. To factorize x squared I've got x and x. The factors of 6 are 3 and 2 or 6 and 1. Knowing both of them are going to be positive the answer I'm looking for is 3 and 2 because that would give me 5 when I am adding. Now, a good way to check your trinomials is to always do your smiles. 2 times x is 2x, 3 times x is 3x. And when I add it, I get 5x, which is the middle number. When I multiply the last two numbers, I must get the last term. Trinomials are intense. A basic way to remember them is, if I'm given an ax squared plus bx, plus c, then my two brackets are plus and plus. If I'm given an ax squared minus bx plus c, my two brackets are minus and minus. If I'm given an ax squared plus bx minus c, then one bracket is plus and one bracket is minus. 
if I'm given an ax squared minus bx minus c, then one bracket is plus and one bracket is minus. Now pay attention to the signs. When I had a plus on my c, then the signs in the bracket were the same. When I had a minus on my c, then the signs on my brackets were different. Also, you must remember that when we do our smiles, so when we're doing our smiles, that will be the determining factor for your signs in the last two. So then you can decide which number is going to be plus and which number is going to be minus. Another thing you need to remember is that at all times when we worked with this, we made a positive. If by some chance a is negative, then you take out a common as a negative as we did in step one. So you take out a negative one as a common, making a positive and then you can use all the following rules. Okay, the third factorizing we have is difference of two squares. When we're doing difference of two squares, we're going to root the first term. So the root of 9x squared is 3x. Then we root the second term. The root of 16 is 4. After we do that, we put, we add a plus in one bracket and we add a negative in the second bracket giving us our factorized version of difference of two squares. The fourth version we have is grouping. You would use grouping when you see you can't take out a common. There isn't three terms to do trinomials. There isn't difference of two squares. Then you use grouping. You will see grouping tends to be used a lot when there are four terms or five terms. So if I gave you the following. If you look at the entire equation, you can see there isn't a common in any of the terms. We can't take out a common that would be in all four terms. So what we do is we group them. But you must remember that when we grouping, remember our plus. You can't group by doing the following. I'm grouping this. And I'm grouping this. That is incorrect. Another incorrect version is when you do this. You say, okay, I'm grouping the first two terms and I'm grouping the second two terms, but you're leaving a negative in between. Those are careless mistakes that would make your factorizing incorrect. If you look at this block, you can say, okay, A is, a, a is the same. And if you look at this block, you can say, okay, P is the same. So how do we go about grouping? We're going to say ax plus ay, and then we put a plus sign. We've got minus px minus py. Then we take out a common in the first bracket. We look for a common in the first bracket. It's a. We are left with x plus y. Then we look for a common in the second bracket. You can take out a sign as a common, which is minus p. Now remember when you take out a negative, then the answer in the bracket must change. It will become positive x. Because when you simplify to double check, if I simplify and say minus p times x, I'm going to get minus px, which is correct. If I took out a minus p from the second term, I'm left with plus y. Now, what is common in these two terms? We still have two terms. Here's one term and here is my second term. What is common is my x plus y. The entire bracket is the same. I am left with a minus p. I factorized completely. The fifth style of factorizing is cubes. Now, when you're doing cubes, it is not the same 
as difference of two squares. The first bracket we are going to cube root, not square, cube root the first term and we cube root the second term. So I end up with x plus 3. But how do we get the second bracket? The second bracket, the first part is made up of the square from answer 1. So x, x squared will give me x squared. And the last term is made up from the square of answer 2. So I'm going to square the 3, which will give me plus 9. Now the important one is the middle term. The middle term is change of sign. So it would be negative. If there was a negative there, then the second term would be positive. And multiply the 2. So I've got 3x. And you've completely factorized a cube. Thank you for watching.